Have you ever had trouble getting motivated to write? Have you considered that a chimpanzee might be the problem? Allow me to paint you a picture. You wake up in the morning knowing that you need to write. Maybe you even feel a fleeting sense of motivation, but when you sit down to write, that motivation quickly disappears. Or it disappears at the mere possibility that you could write. The negative thoughts about how hard it will be appear 30 to 40 steps away from your keyboard. The thought of doing writing makes you feel bad, so you don't do any writing, and then you feel bad that you didn't do any writing. Motivation just never seems to arrive at the right time, and when it does arrive, it quickly leaves. The problem with motivation is the motivation itself. Relying on motivation is a terrible way to get things done, and there's a much better way that I'm going to walk you through today. Today, we're talking about how to get writing done without relying on motivation. I do rely on you to be motivated to subscribe to my channel, though, so please do that. The framework I'm using to talk about this today was developed by Dr. Steve Peters. Peters is a psychiatrist based in the UK, and he's worked a lot on understanding the parts of the brain that produce emotions, and how the parts that handle emotions and drive our actions work together. He wrote a book called The Chimp Paradox, and another one called A Path Through the Jungle, about this model of thinking. It's really interesting stuff, and he's way more qualified to talk about it than I am. But let's start by talking about motivation. Motivation, at least in my context here, can be described as an emotion that draws you towards taking action. It is the feeling that makes you want to do something. The fact that motivation is an emotional construct is the main problem, and Dr. Peter's model can help explain why. Dr. Peters talks about what he calls the chimp brain. This is the part of the brain that responds emotionally to events. It's where emotions and thoughts come from. He calls it the chimp brain because it's basically the same structures that you would find in a chimpanzee's brain if you cared to look inside. This contrasts with the executive action-focused part of the brain, which Dr. Peters calls the human brain. The human brain is the part that controls action. It's where rationality and logic comes from. It's the part that knows you should do something, even if you emotionally don't feel like it. And crucially, it's actually the part that runs the show. You are the human brain. The part of you that wants to be a writer, the part of you that knows you should do writing, the part of you that knows what you could be doing, that all comes from the human part of the brain. That is separate from the emotional or chimp part of the brain. The chimp brain is not a bad thing. It's a vital part of what makes you, you. It is incredibly useful but it shouldn't be running things. All of these parts play a different role, and to function well, they need to be doing what they were designed to do and working in sync with each other. The way Peters describes it is basically the chimp or emotional part of the brain feels something, senses some kind of problem, and then alerts the human brain about that problem and waits for it to take action. The human part of the brain is where solutions come from, and ideally those solutions would come in the form of some sort of action. This is great news because it means you're not just a slave to your emotions, or at least you don't have to be. The emotional part of the brain does in fact signal the logical part to find solutions to the problems it encounters. It says, hey, I really don't feel like writing. What are we going to do about it? And then waits for the human part of the brain to make a decision. And according to Peters, at least, the chimp part of the brain really doesn't care what that solution is, only that there is a response, only that there is a feeling that there will be some kind of solution. The problem is that most people respond to and accept these emotions without any question. You know you could get some writing done, the emotional part of your brain goes, that's going to be really hard, and you just agree and say, yeah, so let's go watch YouTube or something. Please subscribe. This is why relying on motivation to get writing done is so dangerous. 
Emotions don't come from the part of the brain that takes action. Instead of relying on motivation, Peters recommends using commitment. Commitment, when you boil it right down, is action in spite of emotion. When you commit to doing something, you do it without any regard to how you feel about doing it. Commitment comes from the human part of the brain. It's a logical, rational decision to do something, and it's entirely within your control. The human part of you is like, let's do some writing. Then the chimp goes, whoa, 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 that seems really hard. That's the point where the logic centers need to say, it's not actually going to be that bad, we're just going to do it. I found that emotions just want to be fed. They just want to be reacted to in some way. When you get right down to it, the chimp brain doesn't really care if you write or not. It just wants to produce emotions and get attention paid to those emotions in some way. It doesn't care what you feed it. If you commit to sitting down to write, it will accept that and when you actually start, the thoughts that kept you from starting will eventually go away. You'll have other problems to deal with and there will be emotions that come up as you write, but you'll still be getting writing done and that's the important part. So the main takeaway from all this is stop feeling like you don't have control over this. Take a step back, observe, don't rush to conclusions, understand that there's a system at play here, and once you start getting control of it, great things will happen. Just like watching this video was a great thing for you, I hope. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can subscribe to my channel. I post new writing advice related videos every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.